All right, moving on to the second part, the second video. Uh, this is a little fun game that I love to play in all my uh, cardiac classes. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, just pause the video, try to fill it out as best you can, but we're just going to zoom through it because we've got a lot of stuff we need to cover. So starting off up here, what is that? Everybody should know. Oh my gosh, the sinoatrial node. Now if we continue moving downwards, we have the atrioventricular node. And then further down from that is this His bundle that's right after the aventricular node. And now we're going to enter into the lower section of the heart where we enter the posterior bundle that goes behind the left ventricle and the right bundle that goes in front and supplies the right with uh, electrochemical uh, gradient supply. And then the Purkinje fibers that actually sprout up like, like, like roots sprouting through the ground, through the ventricular muscle. Now, the last one is a bit of a, uh, a, a sort of gotcha question because it's something that EMTs and nurses and doctors always forget about, and it's the Bachman's bundle. This is incredibly important and is left out of a lot of diagrams, uh, but it, the reason that it's important is because we need both these atria to fire at the same time, and they both need a supply of electrochemical gradient uh, ions, and so that's why we have this neuronal, these neuronal cells moving through both atria. Uh, so just remember that. This is one of my favorite diagrams. And the reason I like this diagram is because it's very intricate and it sort of moves away from that old idea that the that it's it's just like the, it's this map. It's this map of neurons. This map of neurons that move throughout the cell. And that the fact is that it's not like that. The the way it is it's, it's implementing cells and it's and it's a dynamic movement and placement of cells within inside the uh, the muscle of the heart. So if we can, if we sort of break this down, we can see that the sinoatrial center is right here in the red. The periphery is in the green, and everything in the purple is the atrial muscle. Now, uh, just so you know that this is this is a rabbit heart that I used for uh, that that is used uh, from the main uh, research article that I that I got all of my automaticity information from but we can see how it's sort of painted on here and it's really not that nice clean you know yellow line that we're all used to all, that we're all used to seeing because the fact is it's not like that the fact is is that it's these cells that are placed around these myocyte cells, or, or rather these myocyte cells are placed around these autorhythmic pacemaker cells. So it's, it's again, not this, not this line that we're all used to seeing. Uh, before we move on, one of my favorite things to show is this. So we see that here's the endocardium and the epicardium. So this endocardium we can see that it still has some of the center of the sinoatrial node and some of the periphery. And this epicardium, we can still see, look, look at this cent this red center, these red center cells and the, the periphery cells of the sinoatrial node inside the atrium. So it, it spans the entire way, but is mostly filled with inside the myocardial cells with inside the middle where the muscle is. Now let's check out this, this diagram. It's relatively easily broken down. Some people sort of get intimidated by, you know, oh my gosh, look at all this stuff that's happening, but it's really easy. This one is mainly the sinoatrial node uh, a diagram that's, that's used commonly in critical care scenarios. So we know that the inside of the cell normally has a negative environment and we have to get it past this threshold to this positive environment to have that change in, in potential, right? So what happens is these sodium channels start flowing through. All right, we got sodium, sodium start going through. Then we have a stimulus and bang, all of these, these sodium channels open up and all the sodium rushes into the inside of the cell and these sodium gates then close. But look at that large jump that we made from 70 to 30. And there are gonna be uh, different texts that say different things like, you know, that you start out at 90 or you start out at 70 or you, or you end at 40. So just know that, remember, we're looking for the difference in ion potential. 
Now let's continue forward. Uh, the sodium gates close and potassium begins to, to uh, open up and start to excrete. And we also have some calcium influx that they forgot to add into this slide, but that does happen. Now when we start to repolarize, after our depolarization, we're on the, the ascending repolarization, or excuse me, the descending repolarization, this happens, the sodium potassium pump, and this really didn't give it enough uh, sort of understanding into it because remember that when we use the sodium potassium pump, the sodium is being pushed into its electrochemical gradient. It's being pushed into, or excuse me, outside the cell. It's being pushed outside, and then, and then potassium is being pushed inside. And since we're going against the electrochemical gradient, we have to use energy. Energy in the form of ATP, and ATP is how we utilize energy. It's the breaking of a phosphate bond. So remember that this repolarization costs energy, okay? And then we just start the entire potential over again. We end at 70 and then move forward from there. And that's it. It's just the movement of these ions. And there's also chloride ions that flow through a channel with inside there as well. But these are the main ions that we really, really need to focus on. So uh, let's continue going forward because this is, again, an amazing slide to understand. And what this does is this actually breaks down the, the different action potentials, right? Because that's what we just looked at is our action potentials of the different types of cells within inside the myocardium. So pay no attention to this SA node, atrial node, and AV node. It's just kind of the way that this slide came out when I put it on there. But here's the AV node and its action potential. And there's the atrium muscle and its action potential. Now look at the, the major difference in that and how it looks. And we can even go further into the AV node and how that action potential is so, so different. And then we go into the His bundle and the Purkinje fibers and the ventricle muscle down here. And wow, that just looks really weird. And, and it all correlates to this ECG right here. So what we're seeing is a culmination of all these cells firing being traced onto an ECG right here. So I really, really like the idea of, of all these action potentials being different and, and different uh, amounts of ions being moved inside and outside of these cells to get them to one contract and then, or fire and then contract. I think that's absolutely, absolutely cool. So here is what we're going to end on because we've built a lot. We started out with understanding that, you know, it's not this map of yellow, you know, stringy neurons that are that that are within inside our cell. We understand that it's a dynamic placement of cells throughout the myocardium and that these sort of can diffuse through tissue and be placed in weird places. So let, let's look at this this ion potential right here. We see that we have it a change right as those ions start moving and the entire process is trying to get back to baseline and then once we get back to baseline it will flip again we go from negative to positive so we can we can see that one one more time so we can sort of understanding it boom that sodium change and then the entire time trying to get back to that that normal potential and this is another great one that I really like seeing because this is a rabbit heart and this is a cluster of those atoms, those automaticity atoms. And we can see them firing before the other atoms out in the periphery fire. So it's sort of uh, th this node is the center point of this entire idea. And that's why I really, really like it. Fire, fire, fire. That, that's really, really cool. But then if we add on to that, we can see that it moves throughout muscle and it causes this contraction of multiple, multiple cells that actually can move this, this giant muscle to create blood flow. And that's what this is, the creation of blood flow. And I, and I, I absolutely adore this video because it, it really shows what our heart is doing right now. This is a donor heart, and what they're going to do is, is hook it up to a blood supply that they just received it from, and you're going to see it, you know, not really start to fire correctly. Like, hey, you know, this rhythm isn't really syncing up correctly. See, it, it doesn't look like it's very happy right now. But once we start uh, adding the, the correct vasculature, oh my gosh, yeah, and that's what we made. So that's what it is. 
you add up all these things together, all these action potentials, and you have the firing of the myocardium. All right, we followed the neurons. Let's keep going.